Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, today I want to talk about the Road to Seven Lost Spell Number One campaign, which should be the next thing that should be upcoming for the NA side of the game. That's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel a whole bunch. And let's go right into it. So, the Lost Belt 1 campaign, when should it actually arrive? I would expect it a week right after from when this started on NA. So, it was the 9th on JP, so that would probably be the 8th for us. I've also been wrong a little bit on the times lately, so it might come a little bit earlier. Who knows? Uh, I need to get a little bit better with predicting my times, but there have been cases where they've showed up a little bit earlier than I was expecting. Um, which just means I have to get better with that. So yeah, the reason that this event also has to come first, though, is because uh, Battle in New York is actually locked behind clearing Anastasia. So if you want to participate in the Lotto event that's coming up, you need to clear Anastasia. And thankfully, this event is actually very easy, so... You can easily kind of knock this out and then just go straight to Anastasia if you have not beaten Anastasia yet. But if you haven't beaten Anastasia, there is some slightly other things for you to do. Um, for example, there will be interludes that will be unlocked for servants that are unsummoned. Uh, for a limited time, all interlude quests for servants related to Lost Bell 1 will be unlocked with special conditions, even if you do not own the servant yourself. The special conditions overwrite the default ones during the campaign. In case of a servant interlude requiring the servant to be in a formation, you will automatically be forced to choose a servant of the NPC type. Um, and I guess this is them showing what that means. So you can see here it's in Lost Belt 7. You go in here and then it says the interlude. And it'll be right there. And there you go. This is all in Japanese, so I don't fully understand. Uh, I also think it sounds like you still need to have completed the special conditions behind them if you actually want to play them. That's what I get from reading this anyway. I've tried to figure it out, and I'm pretty sure you still need to do this. And in my head, I think you still need to have unlocked these special conditions. Um, because these, a lot of these fights are kind of expecting you to have cleared a certain level of difficulty in events. So it would be very, very messed up to have someone who just cleared Fuyuki try and attempt to beat Ivan's current interlude. <laughs> it would probably go insanely hard for them. But anyway... Ivan, Anastasia's, Atalanta's, Avisebron, and Saliari's will be unlocked. And if you do not have Saliari, Atlanta Altar, um, Anastasia, or Ivan, that means you'll be getting all the quartz from doing these interludes, which I would suggest you doing. Uh, you should be able to get a grand total of, let's see, there's four from Anastasia. Uh, one, two, three, three right here. So that is seven same quartz and assuming you don't have all of them then that is eight the reason is is that this gives um if they do not give an upgrade of any kind they give an additional same quartz so that's why anastasia gives two and as opposed to everyone else just gives one so there you go um and their online conditions are for ivan you need to have cleared lost belt number three prologue intro three to four for anastasia you need to have cleared the intro of lost belt one um, for the second one, you need to have cleared Lost Belt 3's prologue. Uh, Fuyuki for Atlanta Altar. Uh, Lost Belt 3 prologue, 3 to 4, and that's the same for all of them. They're, they really want you to get to at least a Lost Belt 3 <laughs> and get that in order to unlock them, I guess. And that's how I understand it works anyway. If, it, if, it, if it's different from what I'm understanding... Please correct me on this, because I need to know as well, because it sounds like that's what it needs to know. And to be fair, I'll never 100% know for new players, because i am already cleared a lot of this. So if you can, if you know for sure how this works, please let me know. I need to know it for sure. But just because of the situation that I'm in, though I've cleared Lost Belt, all, all, I'm up to the most current Lost Belt, I'll never know how this actually works, because it doesn't actually function for me. So I need to know from someone who's going for that specifically. Anyway... There will be recollection quests um, during the campaign. Uh, you'll also get Stargazer teapots that will expire at the end of the month. Um, after you clear the main quest Anastasia Lost Belt, these recollection and super recollection quests will be unlocked in the Anastasia map. Uh, players are not allowed to use two of the same servants from support for the re super recollection quest, so it's just like the challenge quest or the um, Battle Free New York style events. Uh, clear main quest Anastasia is the unlock condition for this first one. Quest name chapter 13 arrow 3 recollection quest. 
So after you've cleared Anastasia, you get this one. And then after you clear the Chapter 13 Arrow 3 Recollection Quest, you get these two, which is Chapter 13 Arrow 3 Super Recollection Quest, and then the Chapter 20 Arrow 2 Recollection Quest. And beating that will unlock the Super Recollection Quest, and also Chapter 22 Arrow 3 Recollection Quest. And that final one will let you unlock uh, the Super Recollection Quest. And in total, you'll get 1, 2, 3 tickets and 30 teapots from all that, which is pretty alright. Uh, since these are kind of throwbacks to the specific fights that you have in uh, Lost Belt 1, I'll just keep it hidden for now. Um, but they should be based off of the specific fights that you had in Anastasia, because they're just recollection type quests. And I assume for Super Recollection, it's a harder version of it. Um, and for the summoning campaign, um, it will have a banner, which features Ivan the Terrible, Anastasia, Atalanta Altar, Avisa Braun, and Saliari. Um, and also a Raid of Craft Essence for the Heretical Yaga, uh, which is the CE that you get after you complete Lost Belt 1. Uh, and then these Craft Essences, which are not on Raid Up, will be included in it, which is Phantasmal Princess, Illusionary Confessional, and Paradise of Flowers. And they're going to remove, uh, Sealing Designator Enforcer and the Holy Shroud of Magdalena, which means that these two will never darken another summon video that I do of my brother ever again. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, we're basically retiring them. Put their jersey up. No longer will I have to suffer <laughs> by getting these CEs ever again. But if you've never gotten them, then that's a shame for you, I guess. Sorry. Sorry about that rip. Uh, and some of these MPs are really funny. <laughs> it looks like I didn't realize that this one gives 60% MP damage if it's on a Berserker. That's very funny. Defense against male enemies plus 15% and then damaged MP gain plus 25% and then a star absorption and quick 8 plus percent. Like, this one is pretty tame. Well, not tame, but, you know, compared to the silly things that the other two are kind of going up against, I'm surprised that this one doesn't have an additional kind of silly thing to it. But anyway... Uh, the following banners is how it's going to be breaking down. There's going to be one for Ivan, and that will go from... And then there will be one for Anastasia. So they'll not share the same banner, obviously. So uh, for the units themselves, Avisa Braun is always there. Nice to get a rate up on him. He is one of the newer... Uh, actually, not new. This has been years ago. <laughs> you should have MP5 Avisa Braun by this point, unless you are a brand new player. Saliari, though, he's a little bit tougher to get to MP5 unless you're specifically summoning on the GSSR that has Saliari on it, in which case you will get five copies of Saliari somehow from doing that one, um, from that one, uh, summon. Uh, Saliari is a very good, uh, Avenger, though. He's an AoE Avenger who is also Arts, so he can actually, I think, loop in some instances. At least I think he can. I don't think I've actually ever tried with Saliari, which is a shame because I actually really do like the design of Saliari. I think he's cool as hell. He has all three. He has the cool kind of regular mode. He has the hello, I'm actually the man mode. Then he has this monster form, which is pretty cool. And then you can see here, here he is ripping apart the Saliari picture that is him because he is no longer that he's been ruined by the movie Amadeus that makes it seem that Saliari actually hated uh, Mozart when in actuality there's very little case for that to be the case <laughs> anyway very cool unit to have very hard to get because he has a story lock three <laughs> so any chance that you can get especially if you're someone who is trying to get him to level 140 <laughs> This is your best guess, I guess, of trying to get more Soliari copies. It's, uh, for this banner is perfect if you are a big fan of Ivan or you are a big fan of Anastasia and you want some more of Visa Braun and Soliari medals, <laughs> then this is for you. I've never seen a banner more dedicated for you, so shoutouts to you, you crazy diamond, shine on. They finally did it. They did it for you. <laughs> Atalanta Altar, I believe, is an AoE or a single target. Single target has to be single target because the other Archer version is an uh, AoE unit, so she's single target. She's a single target quick. Uh, don't know too much about her, unfortunately, other than Atalanta Altar looks pretty cool. Here she is, regular. And then here she is with less clothing and a big boar on her shoulder. And then the boar goes away and the clothing goes away, too. So you can have all three forms of whatever you want. Do you want more clothing? Do you want less clothing? Do you want more boar? All three forms are there for you. The sky's the limit. 
get get what you want out of Atlanta Alter. Now let's go over the five stars. We'll go over Anastasia first. Uh, Anastasia, she is a caster. Uh, she is first skill. She is one quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Mystic Eyes of Penetration D. <laughs> uh, Penetration D ignores invincibility for one turn, increases own art performance for one turn, and then it reduces one enemy's debuff resistance for one turn. 50% arts increase, and then 100% debuff resistance on a cooldown of 5. Her second skill is the Freezing Charisma B, which is an increase to party attack and a reduction of party en of enemies' attack for three turns. The party increase is 20% and the enemy decrease is 20% and that's a cooldown of 5 again. Her third skill, which uh, eventually gets strengthened into, is called the uh, Shivit... The Shivit... 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 Sh like, a lot of people give me a lot of shit for the way that I say some words, but how the fuck am I supposed to pronounce this? Shiv... No, I'm adding words. Shiv... Ib... Zik... Shibizik. Let's go with that. B+. Plus. Charges own NP gauge. Uh, chance to stun all enemies for one turn. Reduce all enemies' arts resistance for three turns. Uh, MP up is 50%. The sun chance is 60%. And the arts resistance is 30%. And the cooldown is of 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation EX and the Fey Contract A. And her third skill is an anti-caster damage attempt aptitude. Because do not trust anyone, not even yourself. And her noble phantasm is the VVV, the Let Your Wicked Eye Run Free. Uh, it is a arts noble phantasm that hits four times. It is a spiritual noble phantasm, uh, rank EX. Deals damage to all enemies and then seals their skills for a single turn. The damage is 450% at MP level 1. If you get her all the way to MP level 5, it is 750%. Reduce your defense for three turns. And the damage reduction is 20% at charge level 1. If you get her all the way to the final charge level... Cool 40, right there. And that is Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia is good, because she can actually loop, because she's an arts... <laughs> she's an arts unit that has four hits, which is pretty good, and then if you somehow fail that, this ability gives you 50% NP gain. I don't know what more you could possibly want. The bigger bummer about her is that she is only 50% arts. I probably would still... Yeah, I actually do have Anastasia, and I never use her because I use Anastasia... and I, bleh, I use Sherazade instead a lot of the time. But I think you could probably end up using her. And you could probably make a case for her if you're ever in a situation where you really want to debuff the enemy a whole bunch. And you're not in a situation where you're fighting a king, which is where you would probably want a king or queen, which is where you would want to use Sherazade or something. But in terms of just pure, straight up generics, you're probably good to just use her on um, just about anything. You should be able to loop no problem. I wouldn't 100% know because, again, I don't have Anastasia. But feel free to tell me if I'm wrong on that. But based off of what I know about <laughs> looping with arts, she should be able to do it unless she has like just terrible envy gain. In terrible NP generation, which I don't think she does. Just regular, uh, from what I can see right here. Let me just check Sherazade real quick to see if she has the same. Uh, yeah, basically the same. MP charge on attack. Oh, let me see. Affects how much MP generation is increased when attacking enemies. It's a 0.51%. Literally the exact same. The only difference is I think Sherazade hits like uh, a little bit more. She hits one more time. <laughs> it does a little bit more damage because hers has been buffed. Yeah, the only thing that I would probably say needs a little bit of helping is this ability here. You know, maybe it, there's nothing wrong with giving a caster three turns of 50% arts, I think. That's nothing bad, right? And this defense uh, debuff res uh, resistance is good because it does go with the third skill because the third skill is only a 60% chance of stun. What did this used to be? Didn't used to give arts resistance down. Okay, I understand then. That's Anastasia. Again, I think she's good. Ivan the Terrible. Oh yeah, everyone. Voiced by Kiryu Kazuma himself. Kurata Takaya. If you want Ivan in the form... If you want Kiryu in the form of Ivan, here you go. Uh, Ivan the Terrible, also known as Ivan Valishke, Ivan Grosny, Thunderous Emperor, Ivan the Fourth, Ivan the Formidable, Ivan the Fearsome, <laughs> Grand Prince of Moscow. My guy has a lot of names. One quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, his first skill is the 
Contradictive Mind A+, uh, which is a strengthening. Increase own MP generation rate for three turns. Increase own MP gauge. Increase own damage against enemies with the lawful alignment for three turns. Increase own damage against enemies with the chaotic alignment three turns. And then remove own debuff. The MP rate is 50%. The MP up is 30%. The lawful damage is 30%. And so is the chaotic damage. And that's on a cooldown of 5. When did this strengthening came out? come out? Comes out with this campaign. Let's go. Perfect. Uh, second skill, instant monster, lost A. Increase own crit stars every turn for three turns. Increase own buster performance for three turns. Star regen is 10. The buster up is 40% on a cooldown of 5. His third skill is the almighty supreme authority A. Grant self invincibility for a single turn. Reduce all enemies attack for three turns and then removes their debuffs. Um, removes their debuffs. <laughs> removes their buffs. 20% attack down and on a cooldown of 6. Uh, his third skill is an anti-Avenger uh, attack damage aptitude, and his rank EX Noble Phantasm, which gets upgraded after his interlude, is the Severi Kresni Kod, the beast that, accom that accompanied me on my journeys. Rank EX hits five times, it's a buster, it's anti-unit, deals damage to all enemies, and then reduced her buster resistance by 30% for three turns. 40% uh, damage to level 1, and if you get it all the way to MP level 5, it's 600%, and then increase own MP damage for one turn. 30% MP damage or charge level 1, and if you get them all the way to the final charge level, it is 70%. And that is Ivan. Uh, he is good. Um, this skill is very funny, because I just realized it gives MP generation rate up, but like he's Buster. So, <laughs> very, unless you're fighting a boss, you're very rarely ever going to be act And then also have your arts cards out. You're very rarely ever going to have this <laughs> actually benefit you in some kind of way. Um, yeah, he ends up being able to loop with Vich because he gets a fifty. He gets a thirty percent. So you actually need Oberon here at the end, and I think you might also need some other stuff, um, depending on some other things. But it should be possible to loop with that and it's all all these cooldowns are pretty good this is a cooldown of five this cooldown of five and it's a cooldown of six so you'll be able to get a lot of them back this one skill is maybe the one that i think probably needs the buffing the most because it is definitely defensive based but i don't know do you really need a defensive based thing on a aoe unit i guess sometimes you do because there are certain quests where you need it but for the most part, Ivan seems to be mostly focused on, like... Actually, his kit is a little bit weird now that you look at it, because it's like, yeah, Star Region... And that the increase on buzzer performance is really good, but then there's not a lot of, like, reasons you would ever... Fi Unless you're fighting a lawful or chaotic enemy. Uh, a lawful chaotic enemy, in which case you'll be able to do 60% damage bonus to them, but I don't think that's enough to justify it. I mean, you do also reduce your buster resistance, which is really nice, actually. After the interlude, that's actually pretty good. Hmm. I don't know. Ivan is a really cool unit. I don't think he ends up being used that much just because I don't think a lot of people are a big fan of Ivan. But there's nothing, like, actually legitimately bad. Even the thing that I said, like, I don't know about this. It's still a good skill. It still works out perfectly fine. <laughs> like, the ability to remove buffs is insane. Like, I talked on a video that I'm not releasing about Ozymandias, about how he has a specific gimmick where, like, the reason it's a pain in the ass to fight Ozymandias is because he has a chance of just looping this one skill that keeps giving him 40% attack and 40% defense. <laughs> so if you get to the point where he has too much of that stack on him, he just kills you because you aren't able to actually do any damage to him. And this doesn't just remove that completely, and that's actually pretty nice. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with Ivan. Ivan's a perfectly good unit as far as I can tell. Uh, the only thing that, that that's bad is that uh, <laughs> he's limited. And he's, he is, doesn't actually show up all that often. And like I said, he's not really that popular of a character. I think it might be a little bit different now on the NA side. I feel like we've turned a, a case on Ivan. Ever since we lost the ability to do the Ivan raid. <laughs> I feel like a lot of more people appreciate Ivan in a very uh, ironic way. So that makes um Maybe it transitions into him being a little bit more popular because, <laughs> because of that. But I definitely do have more happy feelings towards Ivan because I remember... Man, remember that? Remember when everyone was angry that they couldn't do the raid that lasted 20 minutes, which is a legitimate thing to be angry about? <laughs> remember when it just woke up and it was broken? There was no compensation for it and it was really sucky? Uh, yeah, what a time, huh? What a time a couple months ago was. <laughs> what a time. 
way back when. But yeah, I always, I, I've always liked Ivan. The only problem is that Ivan keeps being released at bad times. Like, for example, even now, with the Road to Lost Belt 7 stuff, if you look at him here, he is nestled in between Arjuna Altar, and then Gilgamesh, and then Merlin, and then after this, starting next month, and then Scotty at the end of the month, because she's going to be part of Lost Belt 2 campaign. And then in April, that's when the Fago Learning with Manga stuff starts. And then I believe Morgan returns right here at the beginning of the next month. So it's kind of like... It, it sucks because unless you... I guess the good thing is that on the NA side, you can, in theory, put stuff aside and then summon for him eventually. But I don't know. He always seems to show up in, like, the worst places. Because even when I'm, like, making my plans, I'm like, like I can maybe spare something for Ivan. The answer is, is, like, I just never can. So I just kind of have to hope that he ever shows up on a GSSR that I really want. I feel like he's one of those units. Like, he's a unit that, like, you're happy if you get him on a GSSR. Because you're like, well, he's brand new. I have this new unit and he's good. <laughs> and I'll be happy there. And like I said, he is voiced by he is the same voice actor as Kiryu Cosmo. So if you want to see him in a giant elephant costume or whatever the fuck this is actually an ancient beast of some kind, you can. Uh I also have a special spot in Ivan because me and my brother constantly talk about Ivan the terrible whole bunch. Uh as I've said, I think mentioned every single time, mustache. And then this is like his tiny face. And this is his big old mouth. That's the way I perceive Ivan. Which I think is probably not wholly accurate. I don't think this is supposed to be a mustache. <laughs> I don't know where his eyes are. They're, they're somewhere. He's, he's able to see through the tusks. He only gets more of like a a beast of some kind as you go on as well. It's, it's a hell of a thing. But anyway. That's the Road to 7 Lost Bell campaign. And then the Road to 7 project is just them saying like, yo, enjoy this wallpaper of and Twitter share campaign and stuff like that. Um, and it also sounds good because it sounds like they're going to be doing a little bit more streams um, that are a little bit more like, I guess, podcasty type, which is really nice because it is nice to hear from them. And it's not the same as the JP experience because one... I can understand what they're saying. But the important thing is is that they'll be able to give us 16 quarts at the end and give us the info after just kind of screwing around, which is basically what the, J the JP side does. They just do it with a little bit more panache as opposed to uh, a little bit more of a setup as opposed to just doing it on a couch <laughs> and just kind of talking. But anyway, I digress. That is the Lost Belt 7... Lost Belt 7? The Road to 7 Lost Belt 1 campaign that should be showing up pretty soon. Feel free to tell me if you're looking forward to anything about the Lost Belt thing coming up. I should hopefully be very soon be able to be doing more videos. I was originally planning to do all a bunch of like tiny videos for the White Day dudes, but then I ended up missing a lot of them because of work. Like I was going to record them, but then work got really crazy busy and I just couldn't justify it anymore. And then my Friday, which I was like, okay, well maybe I can still maybe salvage it on Friday. I ended up doing something that I just wouldn't have been able to. Uh, that's something I think was going to go watch Dune 2, and then I came home and then had to start working immediately. <laughs> I just, like, had no time. It was really unfortunate. Um, and, yeah, real bummed out about that. But hopefully, even though my work is looking busier this week, I should be able to plan it out a little bit more so that there's more channel stuff going out. Uh, it is really tough for me to kind of, like, find time to kind of do it, especially because at a certain point, I just can't record stuff anymore because it, it gets too late in the day and I don't want to bother anyone with waking them up unless I'm really desperate for it or something. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much if you made it all the way to the end. As always, I really appreciate it. If you want to help out the channel, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out a whole bunch. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is likely going to be talking about Merlin. <laughs> so, until next time, have a good day. Goodbye.